Hello everyone, this is Lugnuts, and welcome to the second video on OpenTTD Logic. In this video, we will first look at logic trains. Then, we will look at a different way of building an OR gate. And finally, we'll talk about absolute red and memories, which can be used to store data. So in the previous video, I forgot to mention what trains can actually be used as logic trains. And the simple answer is that any train can be used as a logic train. But of course, the faster the better, since faster trains will have shorter latency. So in my case, I use the NUTS train set. So NUTS includes some logic engines. So there's the rail one. There's also monorail and maglev. And there's also the logic engine new GRF that you can include with other train sets, which has a really fast train just for logic. But for this game, we only had the Iron Horse train set, which doesn't have a logic engine, so I just picked some random, relatively fast trains to use for these gates over here. And also, you can get away with using half tile long trains for knock gates. It's just that when the output turns red, it'll flash green for a brief moment. But usually, you can get away with that. So here's our OR gate from the previous video. And it uses six logic trains and three knock gates, so it's not very compact. But there is a more compact way to build an OR gate. And it only needs one logic train. So we'll have our two inputs separated by two tiles. And then a track crossing them. Then we only need a single logic train on the cross track. And we'll need two entry signals, two way entry signals on the cross track as well. Then for the output, we'll connect these two inputs together, add some combo signals, and now we have our output. So we can see as long as one of the two inputs is red, the output will stay red. However, if both the inputs are green, the output will be green. So this acts as an OR gate. However, it does have a flaw where if one of them is red first, one of the inputs is red first, then the other input turns red and it switches. So the first input turns green. For a brief moment, as the train rocks back and forth, it'll let a brief green pulse out. And you can't see it here since the logic train is so fast. So here I've set up another train to wait on the output of this OR gate. And we can see that if I remove this track here and turn the one of the inputs to green, this train is let out even though it really shouldn't have. And that's because for a brief flash, the output turns green. So this OR gate isn't suitable for all situations. Now the OR gate based on the three knots doesn't have this problem. So sometimes you just have to use the bigger one. One more thing, you can make this design even more compact by taking the path that the train runs on and using diagonal tracks. So this is the exact same design, but the tracks are laid out a little different. And because the logic train doesn't have to travel as far, it's actually slightly faster, but it doesn't really matter, just if you need extra space. Next is absolute red. From the previous video, we have our true and false values, which are a red signal and a green signal, respectively. But in OpenTTD, we also have a third value, which is absolute red, or absolute true, I suppose. And that's when there's no signal at all. So if there is a train on our wire, that's going to make that wire absolute red. Absolute red works a little bit strangely. So when we take an AND of true and false, we expect false, and that's what we get. So red and green, true and false, gives us false in an AND gate. But if we take the AND of absolute true and false, we get true. So sort of absolute red has changed this AND gate into an OR gate. So this is actually one way of thinking about priorities is priority is like an absolute red based OR gate. Uh, maybe you'll see it if you stare at this, but basically if you chained a bunch of these together, that could make a priority. So absolute red is a little bit confusing. 
but you don't actually deal with it too much generally. Um, the one place that you do have to deal with it is with memories, and it's super useful there. So let's take a look at memories next. So a memory is super simple to build. It's just a tiny loop of track with a pair of combo signals that are facing towards each other. So these combo signals form a cycle. So the question is what's going to happen when we start trying to make these combo signals red? So we can test our different inputs here. So the first thing is if we show it false, it'll stay false, it'll stay green. If we show it true or red, it'll stay green. But if we show it absolute red, the signals will turn red. And then if we stop showing it absolute red, it'll stay red. So now we have a way of storing information. And these signals are just red because they're just looking at each other. If we show it red, it'll keep being red. But if we show it green, that will change it back to being false. So basically, the absolute red tells the memory to turn red, the green tells the memory to turn green, and the red tells the memory to stay whatever color it was before. If we want to read the value from the memory, we can just add a wire coming from the other side of the memory. And this will allow us to read the value of the memory without having to worry about the input interfering. So one of the simplest and most useful ways to use a memory is to detect whether trains have passed a certain point on a line. So here I've set up this memory that is connected to this track here. And as soon as a train comes, the memory will turn red, and it'll stay red, so I'll know that at some point a train did use this track, and it can be useful for debugging your network. So for example, over here, I had a memory set up, and I expected all the oil trains that are picking up oil here to always cross over this bridge, but it seems that some lost train ended up going north instead and taking this track. So you can use that to help debug your network. So here's the current OpenTTD Coop game that's running on the server. And we have a memory here. So this is a FERS game, FERS Industry Replacement Set, and each of these trains is carrying 80 engineering supplies. And the train will deliver the engineering supplies to a primary industry, which in this game requires 80 engineering supplies every three months for gung-ho production. Now in the center of the map, we have a timer which is connected to this yellow line. So every two months is the cycle of the timer. Every two months, the memory will get set to green, which will allow trains to go through. So once the train goes through, it will be on the wire, making the wire absolute red, which will cause the memory to turn red. And then no trains will be let through until the timer cycle happens. So this uh, memory allows us to keep track of whether a train has delivered cargo to a particular primary industry each month or each two months. Also on this map, I've built this counter here, which lets six trains in every clock cycle. So we can see it's based on six memories. So you can see if I isolate one of these, here's one memory here with a little loop. So the way this works is when it gets reset, this train here will run through each of the counters or each of the memories and it'll sort of count like a tally. So one by one, each of these memories turns red and once they're all red, this train will stop and no longer let any more trains through. So in this case, we actually only have one combo signal that's just looking at itself for these memories. So you don't actually need two but two is just useful for separating the input and output of the memory. But if you're careful, you don't need both. Here's an old OpenTTD Coop game, number 275. And this particular machine was built by V453000. So we can see there's a whole array of memories here. And what this machine does is it keeps track of how many trains have entered through these entrances here and picked up passengers in the city. 
So like in all the other situations, memories are really useful for keeping track of when trains have passed through. And you can see these trains are now released and whether they entered is getting recorded in these memories. We also have a ton of knock gates over here. And this is actually just a big OR gate, an OR of all of the inputs. And that's because uh, it checks if any trains are inside of these entrance ways when it tries to reset the memories. And if there is a train there, it has to wait to reset the memories because a train there will prevent the memory from getting reset. It'll stay red. So this big array of knots is just to reset the memories safely. But it's pretty cool. Anyway, those last two designs are pretty crazy and you can't really understand them just by watching a 10 minute video. But I wanted to include them to show the world of possibility in OpenTTD when you're using logic. Anyway, that brings us to the end of this video. So thank you so much for watching. Please consider subscribing if you'd like to see more videos like this. And I'll see you next time.